Chapter 2 of Sorcerers of Lomax Avenue. Jeff felt the van pull to an abrupt stop, causing a jolt that almost made him drop his game station. There it is, kids, Mom said from the passenger seat. We're finally here. Jeff looked up to see they'd pulled in front of their new home. It was a two-story house with a white bottom half and a red top, the same as it look first looked on the website. It's... Something, I guess. He felt a seat being nudged from behind, indicating that his younger sister Millie was leaning forward to get a better look. Whoa, she said. Beauty, isn't it? Dad said proudly. Yeah, home sweet home, Jeff thought. He would never forget the day he and his sisters found out Dad's job was transferring him out west, meaning they'd have to move. The weeks leading up to the fateful day felt like torture, with Jeff and big sister Sasha taking turns complaining. Unsuccessfully, of course. Once everything was packed and not nearly enough goodbyes were said, Jeff and his family left Chicago far behind. After three days on the road, they were finally in the lovely city of Hasty, California. Dad switched off the car. Well, what are we waiting for? For you to turn the van around and take us back to Chicago, said Sasha. Come on, don't be like that, Dad said, unbuckling his seatbelt. Let's go check it out before the movers get here. He and Mom exited the car and walked across the lawn to the front door. Jeff shook his head and returned to his game. Let's go, Jeff, said Sasha, who was out of her seat and standing next to him. Turn off that game and open the door. There's a door on the other side, last time I checked. Jeff snapped. Just go out that one. No thanks, I'd rather not get hit by a car on our first day here. Yeah, what a tragedy that would be. Mom and Dad are waiting for us, so hurry up! Sasha tried to grab the game station, but he wrenched it free from her hand. All right, fine! Jeff closed his hand held, not wanting to turn it off, and stuffed it in his pocket. The moment he opened the sliding door, he was blasted with the afternoon sunlight. He grabbed a comic book off the floor in front of his seat and shielded his eyes with it as he stepped out. He took a few steps and then stopped dead in his tracks. The house suddenly looked bigger than it actually was, almost like a towering mansion. His sister stopped in front of him, Sasha with her arms crossed, and Millie swinging hers back and forth nervously. It's like I'm stuck in the opening scene of a horror movie. Mom and Dad pushed open the front door and looked back at them. Aren't you coming in with us? Mom asked. Jeff reluctantly followed his sisters in, slipping in through the doorway last. The interior was also pretty much unchanged from the website pictures. The walls in the foyer were smoky silver. Ahead of them was a wood-floored hallway leading to what Jeff guessed was the kitchen, judging by the snow-white walls at the end. To the right was a staircase with wood rails. To the left was a large carpeted area with bare white walls. Mom pointed to it. Look at all that space! Dad nodded. Yeah, we might have to get a bigger TV and couch. Yeah, nice try, mister. Mom gave him a light tap on his chest, and Dad responded by pulling her close and kissing her on the forehead. Jeff looked away from their public display of affection. Disgusting. The sound of engines purring and tires rolling provided a welcome distraction. Jeff watched the two moving vans pull up to the house, one parking on the curb behind the van while the other turned up the driveway. I'm going to go see if they need any help, Dad said. Why don't you guys go check out upstairs? I'll be right back. He walked out the door and went over to the van parked in the driveway. Come on, kids, Mom said, pushing them toward the stairs. The walls of the upstairs hall were the same smoky color as the foyer. There was a section cut out on the left, replaced by a sturdy rail overlooking the entryway. The first door on the right opened up to the bathroom, complete with metallic countertop and sink. The bathtub took up the entire right side wall, surrounded by white tiling. Mom ran her hand over the counter. Looks even better than it did in the pictures. After checking it out for a little while, they went out and opened the first door on the left. 
This'll be your room, Jeff, Mom announced. On the left, as they walked in, was a closet with doors that looked somewhat like cheese graters. Jeff walked past them and looked out the window to see the van still parked out front. Dad was standing on the lawn, gesturing toward one of the movers who was wheeling out a bunch of boxes on a hand truck. Knowing him, he's probably saying, Careful with those glass figures, they're very precious, or something like that. What do you think? Mom said. You like it? Jeff turned all the way around in order to see the whole room. It's all right, I guess. Just all right, Mom replied. Hmm, I was thinking we'd put your bed right in the middle here. She motioned to the wall opposite the closet. Okay, now let's check out your room, girls. Jeff groaned as they went into the second room on the left at the very end. This was the part of the tour he dreaded ever since he saw the photos. For one thing, their room was bigger than his and had a carpeted floor. There were two windows, one looking out toward the front of the house and a slanted one on the wall to the right of it, closer to the ceiling. Millie let out another one of her woes as she stopped in the very middle and spun around, taking it all in. Glad you enjoy it. It's not fair. I didn't want to move in the first place, but to not even get the best room on top of that? Why did they get this room? I want it. Oh, shut up, Jeff, Sasha said. Why must you always complain? Sasha, be nice, Mom scolded. She knelt down and put her hand on Jeff's shoulder. Now, Jeff, we've been over this a dozen times. Your sisters have to share rooms, so we had to give them more space. It doesn't mean your room is worse. You get to have it all to yourself. There's nothing to be jealous about, okay? Behind her, Jeff saw Sasha smirk triumphantly. He let out a soft grumble. Fine, he replied, not bothering to make eye contact. Good, Mom said. Now let's go check out our room. Mom and Dad's room was the largest of them all, even bigger than Sasha and Millie's. Figures I get the worst room out of the bunch. Grown-ups get all the cool stuff. On the other side was a door leading to a large bathroom with a shiny tub that looked like it could fit ten people. Oh man, I wish I had a tub like that in my room, Sasha grumbled. Can we at least use it sometime, please? Jeff couldn't help but smile. Now he's complaining. I'll think about it, Mom replied. In the meantime, we should get back downstairs and see if there are any more boxes to unload. Once again, she mushed them like sled dogs back to the hall and followed them down the stairs. What a house, huh? Imagine how it'll look once everything's unpacked and set up. Just as they got back downstairs, a woman with red curly hair walked in through the open door, with Dad following close behind. She appeared to be the same age as Mom and Dad and put on an overly cheerful expression the moment she saw Jeff and his family. Well, hello there, she said, swiping her hand from one side to another, a gesture that looked more like washing a window than a friendly wave. So you're the new family I've heard so much about. What exactly has she heard? This here is, uh, Stacy Richards, Dad announced, sounding slightly annoyed. Apparently the woman invited herself in. She lives across the street from us. Great, Jeff thought. We haven't even been here ten minutes and already we're saying hi to the neighbors. Oh, I guess that makes it official. Well, hello, said Mom, sounding a bit hesitant, but still shaking the woman's hand. Nice to meet you. I'm Denise Courtley, and it looks like you've already met my husband, Peter. These are our children, Sasha, Jeff, and Millie. Miss Richards' face beamed as she looked Jeff and his sisters over. They look just adorable, she remarked in typical mom's friend tone. You have such a wonderful family. She keeps it up. I feel like she might give me tooth decay. Thank you, mom replied. So uh, what about you? Is there a Mr. Richards? Stacy threw her hands up. Heavens no. With my kind of schedule, who has time to find somebody? City board meetings, fundraisers, librarian work. She sighed. It may not be a glamorous life, but it's mine. I can only imagine, Dad said. Well, 
Let me be the first to welcome you to the neighborhood, she continued sing-song. Looks like you still got a ways to go before you're fully moved in. Here, let me help you. Oh, no, that's not necessary, Tom said. Nonsense, insisted Miss Richards. I don't work out three times a week just so I can sit by and watch. I won't take no for an answer. And she didn't. Reluctantly, Jeff and his family let her help with the boxes. She directed traffic and barked out orders as if she was the one who lived there. Even Jeff and his sisters were forced to contribute, carrying the less heavy boxes up to their rooms. After about an hour and a half of swarming around the house, they'd emptied both vans with all the boxes and furniture in the correct rooms. Whew! That felt great, Miss Richards said, hunched over with her hands on her knees. As a matter of fact, she was the only one still on her feet. Everyone else was collapsed somewhere in the front hall. She's not human, thought Jeff, who was on the stairs trying to pull himself up using the banister. She's more like an insane super mutant. All right, continued Miss Richards, quickly catching her breath. Now that that's taken care of, what should we do next? Unload the boxes? Arrange the furniture? Actually, I think we've done enough for today, replied Dad. Thanks for your help, but we can take it from here. Are you sure? Yes, everyone shouted in unison. The family said goodbye to a confused Miss Richards. Shortly after, the movers were sent on their way as well. My legs, Sasha groaned once it was down to just the courtly family. Is it okay if we never move again? Dad chuckled, although he sounded tired himself. I'll keep that in mind. I don't think she's joking. So, Peter, what are we going to do about the beds? Mom asked. It's going to take a while to put everything together. I'll just get out some sleeping bags. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Can Jeff sleep in our room? Millie asked, hopefully. We can have a little sleepover. Yeah, uh, thanks, but I think I'll pass, Jeff said. No way am I going to share a room with two girls. Millie's smile faded. Why not? I thought you'd like spending time with us. Just let him sleep in his room, Mill, Sasha said. We spent enough time together as is these last couple days. Besides, he'll probably just get scared and come running to us anyway. Hey, shut up, Jeff growled. You can discuss it later, Dad said. Come on, everybody in the car. We're going for a drive. Sasha groaned. But I'm tired. Do we have to? Oh, it'll be fun, Dad insisted. We can take a look at the rest of the town, and then after that we'll go out to celebrate our successful move. What's there to celebrate? Can't we just order a pizza? Sasha said. What's there to even see in this town? Jeff added. We won't know for sure until we see for ourselves, said Dad. Actually, I like your father's idea, Mom chimed. She motioned upwards with her hands. All right, kiddos, everyone on your feet. Jeff struggled to stand alongside his sisters and sluggishly followed his parents out the door.